up. Will they ban Yasuo and leave the LeBlanc pick? Or Faker, should he decide to take it? Same bans this time around from SKT. Well, that's a tough choice, yeah, because either way, Faker's gonna have something great. You give Bengi the opportunity to grab Elise's first pick as well. Lots of options here for SK Telecom. You know, even something like a Mundo takeaway is still strong at this point. Yeah, it, it would be. Time. This is a, a lot of thought. And oh, Yasuo is Riven. up. Riven is banned. He Yasuo is. is on the table. Oh, please, we know please. that Faker and Impact have been playing a lot of this champion. Sivir going Whoa. to be the first big. Piglet putting a premium on the mobility and engage potential that this champion brings. And they certainly use on the hunt to the fullest in the team oh, fights last is. game. And Dade loves the AD. And he may go for it right here. I think they have to take it away right now. I think so too, man. You cannot allow Faker to have Yasuo. I can't imagine what sort of death and destruction this guy could bring to Summoner's Rift with that champion the way it is right now. Yeah, Yasuo, now, like you were saying, Doa, Dade oh, has always been known for his yes. shed and his Kha'Zix play, and Yasuo, yep. definitely a high mobility AD melee champion that is in the same vein as some of these others that he's preferred. Now, what is Faker's answer going to be it's a good in the question. mid lane, because Faker has, over the course of the season, defaulted to ranged zone mages. Uh, Oriana, Gragas, Nidalee. Ooh, speaking of walls. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Will, those picks are going to be difficult to play against Yasuo. Yeah. Oriana wouldn't be a bad choice. Ziggs would... Well, it's hard, though, because uh, Wind, yeah. Windwall is so effective against these, these long-range champions. Yeah. And Faker does have some other options on the table. He could try and meet Melee with Melee here in the yeah, mid lane. Yeah, you just go Zed, maybe. Well, they don't have to pick it right now. They could take some other priority yeah, they've got champions some away. Bengi has played some Nunu this season. I would be surprised to, to see it in the final, especially with Sivir. Yeah. Usually, SK Telecom wow. pairs it with Caitlyn, but not going to be the case right here. And will we see a Twitch actually coming in for Imp? There's the Leona pick up for Bata. Certainly one of his strongest champions lately. Twitch would be really weird here. There we go. I was gonna say, yeah, we usually don't see a lot of Twitch. He just has no siege. He's very vulnerable. You can get the flank, he's strong. Right, yes. and you know, when we think about Yasuo right now, and for all we know, Looper's playing Yasuo as well. There's no definitive that's, evidence that's one way or another. And they have the last pick, so SK Telecom will be a little bit in the dark until then. And the Ezreal Leona pickup, that is a power combo that Imp and Bada have been relying on. Great siege, great counter engage. Yeah, oh. And a very strong laning phase, too. Will we see an Alistar possibly? Karthus. And Karthus for Baker. Well, you know what? That's one way to handle that Yasuo. I will give him that. That's right. I mean,. Theoretically, coming in there, you won't be able to block much of what Karthus is doing to you with oh, the exactly. Windwall. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Windwall stops you from being able to put Qs down this no, Karthus. No. I doubt it, yeah. That is very, very interesting. interesting. That's very cool. Oh, well, this is a really late game composition right here. Shivana, Nunu, Sivir coming in. They've got great engage, though. And with the rise of Sivir, it, it allows you to really get into the mix as Karthus, of course. That's one of Karthus' problems, is that he has to get right into the middle of a team fight. And so he's relatively flash dependent. But with a Sivir using on the hunt, he'll be able to Whoa. access things a little bit easier. Zack, maybe on the board. Looper has not played Zack so far this season, you know? but of course, Samsung Ozone, they rode Zack at Ohm Zack play to a champion's they victory really, in spring. They really did, and Zack is a great pairing with Yasuo, man. That's going to give you a lot yep. of opportunities to get that last breath off. Definitely. I like it. There it is, locked in. This game's going to be crazy, man. But Tons of CC from Samsung Ozone. Yep. They're going to be super dependent on Imp for damage output, so Imp's positioning we're going to have to take a really good look at that this game. Well, Samsung Ozo needs to pull out something crazy if they want to have any chance of coming back and taking this Champions Winter Championship. But we have not seen a Zach for quite a while. Now, the only time we've seen Dade here in Korea was in NLB in the third place match where uh, Pawn from Samsung Blue absolutely Yasuo, demolished. Yeah. Oh, Yasuo, yeah. yeah, sorry, Yasuo. Uh, sorry about that, yes. Where Pawn from Samsung Blue demolished Xenic Storm uh, on that Yasuo pickup. So we know that Dade's had a good practice partner in the team house to work on yeah. with Yasuo because we know how good Pawn is with that champion. That's a very good point. 
And all we need is them to pick Jinx, right? That's right. I'm still waiting for it. Uh, him picking Jinx is like my dream tonight. Jinx and Zig. That's the that's the dream for Bonte here. We'll, well see if Well, has played Zig this season. He, he played has. him in the semis very successfully. He has. Bondu on Alistar, that's going to be a treat to watch as well. And here we go, guys. The game is loading up. The Champions Winter Grand Final. Samsung Ozone versus SK Telecom K. Can Ozone tie things up? Let's get in the game and find out. Wub wub. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Baker versus Dade, Karthus versus Yasuo. Not a pairing I thought I would be talking about tonight. But this is actually the first interested. time Karthus has been played this season. Yeah, um, well, same for Yasuo too, I suppose. Same for Yasuo too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the problem with Karthus and why we saw him kind of fall off is that high mobility champions give him a lot of trouble. And, you know, he's going to be facing off against this Elise in the mid lane and that's, that's going to be hard uh, to deal with in terms of ganks. He's going to have to be very careful about how he pushes up yeah. in, in this laning phase because he's very vulnerable to the mobility that and CC that both Elise and Yasuo have. Now, Bengi, we need, really need to be careful and watch his lane or his uh, jungle pathing here because I don't really know what he's going to do with this Nunu in order to stop uh, Dandy from just camping mid. Yeah. Let's see. Meanwhile, down in bot lane, it looks like we've got the standard 2v2 this time around. Now, it's important to note, I think, that that little engagement between Faker and Dade in the mid lane, Dade is building up that flow with Yasuo, and if Faker would have been able to connect with that Q, he would have popped that shield early on, and I'm pretty sure Dade would have preferred to save that until laning phase actually started. So well, absolutely right. able to do that. Yeah, we can see him getting the... E sweeping blade here. Yep. First song giving him that little bit of mobility. Ability to harass right there as well as passive yep. coming up, but he's still taking a little bit of damage here. Baker doing a good job of punishing him for the CS. Well, the flow built so fast. He's going to have so many shields, and that's really what allows Yasuo to kind of go toe to toe with some of these range AP champions in the mid lane, too. It's fun to use. Meanwhile, the top lane, Impact versus Looper. Shivana taking on Zach. And Looper taking a little bit of damage early on, having to pick up some chunks. Yeah, Zach has fallen off a little bit. Uh, mostly, you know, I've talked about this with you about this, but mostly uh, just I think the most likely explanation is, yeah, he's still great, still provides a lot of that really heavy engage in team fights. Uh, but with his health blobs, a little more difficult to pick up these days, a little more contestable as we're seeing right now. He's got to be so careful here, Looper, actually. Yeah, he's got his passive, he's all right. Yeah, but you don't want to pop that that early. True enough. Uh, but basically, he doesn't push towers very well, and his speed at clearing waves and pushing down towers is a lot slower than other top laners right now, so he's less good in a split pushing situation. Now, Bengi coming up for an early gank. He sees that Looper's low. Looper regen. Uh -oh. oh, Bengi coming in behind Looper. They make it that passive event. So Looper having to flash. So he keeps his passive for now. But that's one summoner gone for Looper up in that top lane. Baker's pushing forward pretty far up here into this mid lane. It looks like he's backing off now, right yeah. as Dandy poses threatening in threateningly in the wings right there. But no real action yet. Looper going to have to play close to his turret, but he'll be all right with that. Yep. Zach, one of the better champions at farming under turret. Has that little AOE. And look at this. They're going to go in. There's a bump rise on Nevada. Getting knocked up. They're going to do a lot of damage to Piglet, though. Finally turning, poking an imp a little bit. But so far, no first blood in game two. Yeah, that Asriel Leona just has such insane all-in potential. Both champions able to dash right in. And uh, with all of Ezreal's spells, too, he's able to easily proc the sunlight passives from Leona to get some of that extra harass in lane. He can do it quite safely as well from that back line by using Mystic Shot. Yeah. So it's it's a really powerful lane. Bengi gets caught out a little bit right here. Looper not going to be able to help, though. Dandy gets the smite down and Whoa. forces the flash. So Looper healed up a little bit, courtesy of his passive, courtesy of his Doran's shield. Uh, that's a nice little win. Getting that flash. Meanwhile, Dade getting aggressive on the Faker for just a moment. Faker responds with some damage himself and back to the original skins for Faker this game as well, I guess. You know, Faker has always like preferred these 
these Doran's rings starts on the Karthus, and he used to do it back when Doran's ring cost 475 as well, and he never seems to take damage, as we can see right now. He hasn't even used his potion yet, but he's been able to top himself up. Dandy and Bengi trading a little bit right there in the jungle, making Bengi's life a little bit difficult. Dandy denying the wolves right there in a much more even game so far, but CS values impact really far ahead of Looper up in that top lane. Looper playing scared after coming down early. Well, you can't blame him. I mean, he is under a lot of threat there. He doesn't want to use up that passive just yet. And he'll have time to catch back up CS-wise later in the game, too. And Samsung Ozen, I feel like, you know, one lesson they could learn from last game is to just play things a little bit more patiently. Bengi's here, though. Blood boils on him. There's no ward in the river brush. Yep. And Mata gonna go ahead and clear that one out. Oh, here we go. The headbutt knocks it away. Oh, actually, Mandu. There we go, Zenderplay. Mata needed that to get away, and there's the stun. On to Benki. That was actually clever. Um, SK Telecom, they put down a ward right there because they knew that Mata's lens was up, and if Mata saw it go down, that he might want to go ahead and use that lens immediately in order to clear. So they uh, actually broke the line of Mata and Imp right there uh, by Mata moving too far forward. Now, they didn't get anything out of it, but it was a little mind game that was pretty fun to watch. Yeah, they, they did get a little bit of an advantage in lane, managed to push the minions up to the turret, and that's going to give them a chance to go back and buy. And meanwhile, Dade versus Faker in the mid lane. Things pretty even there as well, although Faker's starting to pull ahead just a little bit in CS. Well, the crazy thing about the composition that SK Telecom is running is that with Ricochet and Boomerang Blade, Piglet's going to be able to chunk down in a 5v5 a lot of people very quickly, and that's going to set Faker up for some nice executes with Requiem later on. That's a really good point. Um, so I'll be interested to see if we ever get to that 5v5 stage, because both teams are theoretically so powerful, and both teams really set up for 5v5 play right here. Oh, Dandy waiting. Thinking maybe they can jump in on the impact, but I really doubt that's gonna happen. Oh, Dandy comes in right uh, as the ward expires. I think Impact still got a glimpse of it, though, possibly. Yep. If he was watching the minimap, I think he still did see that. Looper's done a good job catching up right yep. here. Faker with oh. the exhaust on the Dade. Going on to Dade. Dade doing a lot of damage to Faker, though. Faker in big trouble. There's the Ignite. Can Dade chase him down? And he's here from behind, though. Mandu also oh, present. Oh, Dade, you are in big trouble, man. Trying to get away, trying to use that E. Here comes a Requiem. Will it be first blood? No, not quite. Mata comes in as well, though. First blood may still be taken. Dandy on the run. Mata as well. Looks like everybody gets out, but that was close. A really good roam right there, and that's going to be a dragon for SK Telecom. So even though they didn't get a kill out of it, they will get some sort of gold lead. Dade still here. Dade healing up and no dragon attempt yet. They've got their eyes locked on the blue buff instead. Yeah, well, I mean, it's still full health, relatively speaking, so he'll still be a bit of a threat when you're talking about taking that dragon, but SK Telecom looking threatening. It looks like they won't be able to take it just now. Well, and you know, last game was a bit of a stop, but you can really see the skill from both of these teams coming through in that mid lane combat where nobody oh, yeah. managed to die. Kind of miraculously, Dade didn't even have to use his flash right there. Really nerves of steel to go through that and get away. Barely living through the Requiem, and that's an important cooldown down. In fact, going to go ahead and clear out the waves. Proxy farm behind that top lane turret. And nerves of steel and the Tempest of Steel as well for him. <laughs> that's right. So Dade, staying alive for now. Well, that's actually really important that he did get that Requiem out. That that really lessens the threat, a major cooldown down. Yeah. And that makes the rest of the team able to play just much more confidently. The question is, are they going to go for some sort of objective here while the Requiem is still off the board? Well, we'll see. I mean, Dade pushing up this lane a little bit. Looks like they want to make a move for Dragon. Baker's got some good wave clear, of course. This may just be a vehicle for Dade to go back and buy as well, too. There's a glitched minion in the mid lane right now. You can oh, yeah? see it just standing there. Oh, yeah. And uh, doesn't have, it has HP, but well, I don't know if the players can see it or not, but it oh, is no. a little bit of a bug. He, this is a smart minion, though. Look at that. He's like, if I don't move, <laughs> I won't die. That's a smart minion right there. Surely is. He's a, he should be a role model for other minions. 
All right, here's a Keep great opportunity. Down. I love what Samsung Ozone's doing right now. Go for the Dragon now when you know that yep. Requiem is down. Absolutely. When you have the recall duo bot lane, not a lot of threats. Samsung Ozone should take this one easily. Yeah, that's right. They should be able to jump out to a little bit of an early lead here. A very small lead, but we'll see. There we go. They get the Dragon, and they're, they're going to turn. They're turning. That's right. Yasuo gets knocked up. There's a Solar Flare coming down. Baker, big trouble. He may go down here as well. Banky causing havoc. First blood goes to Dane as he takes down Faker. Meanwhile, an equalizing kill as Faker takes out Dandy. And now Yasuo just going crazier. Dane with an opportunity to maybe get some more kills here. We'll see a battle of the 80 carries. Impact steps in, though, to take down Imp. And Dane on the run has to make off. Nice wind wall to block that snowball from Banky. They were so close to getting so much more. That's right, but two for one in favor of SK Telecom. However, yeah. Dragon goes down, but four men in the bot lane able to push this turret. And Looper not going to be able to push very quickly right here. He didn't follow Impact's roam down there. Maybe a bit of a mistake from Looper. Well, that could have been a much more one-sided fight in favor of Samsung Ozone if Looper had been there. That is true. Yeah, and this is the problem with Zack up in the top lane. He's not really able to capitalize off of that or get any kind of meaningful damage onto that turret. Very slow pushing early on, and Impact able to get that free reign right there. You oh, can see go. the pings were coming in from Looper right there, so they knew Impact was coming. Faker moving forward, trying to get something out of Imp. Imp doesn't have any mana right now. Of course, Requiem still down, not going to be a factor in this fight, but Faker able to pick up a kill on Avengi with his Q. Dade comes in and uses the knockup in combination with his ultimate to get some decent damage down, but Impact with the finisher in his dragon form with the flame breath. Huh. All right, so well, Dane has static shiv. He's going in right now. He does indeed. Going in on the Faker. Faker drops that wall of pain. Pops the AoE. Here comes Banky to try to help out. Dane with the solo kill. Dandy actually picks that one up. But here comes Requiem, and Dane's in trouble. Goodbye. And Faker gets a bit of revenge. Both mid laners going down. Dane getting pretty bloodthirsty there. Well, I, you know, it's still worth it, though, as we see a little bit of a mix-up here. Piglet gets so. clipped by the edge, That's and right. there's oh, the Solar perfect Flare! perfect Solar Flare coming in from Mata. Piglet pops that barrier and gets out with the ultimate. Meanwhile, Mandu zoning really well, doing a lot of damage to Mata as well. But, man, that Solar Flare was so dead on. Oh, that was beautiful, even though there are no kills. And look at that, Mata! He needs to be careful. He's tanky, but... To still have to be cautious in a situation like that. Yeah, Looper's still in trouble under his own turret, though. That's right, in big trouble, has to pop his ultimate. There's a the let's bounce. Staying alive for now. Oh, maybe not. It's dangerous to grab your chunks with that sort of AoE coming up from impact. Yeah, he's got to stick up there. He can't have Shivana push this lane. Mata still hanging around. Yep. Piglet already healed back up, courtesy of some pots and the sustain that he's got from his Vamp Scepter. Now, Piglet running a very interesting build. I've I saw Prey do this uh, in the MLB Finals, which is Vamp Scepter, Pickaxe, and then... I'm not sure what the Longsword's going to be for. He may just go for a fast Last Whisper. Typically, you build into uh, Bloodthirster and Static Shiv, or at least that's what Prey did. It's true. So keep an eye on that. It gives you an earlier power spike, but it delays some of your big items. So you get... By getting the Pickaxe faster, you're more of a lane bully, but maybe not so great in terms of getting a a fast, you know, completing an actual big item quickly. Looper here, yeah, that's Dandy right. on the side. Oh, Dandy comes in, there we go, he impact. He. Yeah, didn't get the cocoon off. Dottie was waiting for Faker to come back in that mid lane. Well, kind of a little bit south of the mid lane so that he could get a kill. That looked like a very happy fan right there, wow. That was pure joy on that fan's face. The fan's face reflects my heart, Monty <laughs> Well, this game Pure is definitely joy. much more entertaining than the last one. By this oh, point, yeah. last game, SK Telecom had already built themselves a lead of nearly 3K. You know what we talked Dead about? even this time around. We talked about how difficult it is, too, to come back mentally as a team after a loss like we saw Ozone suffer in game number one, and they appear to have done it. They look calm and collected here in game two. Get back to home. Yeah, he does. There we go. It's a swag walk out of there. Dade may be going for this one, a little Maybe. bit risky. He wants oh, to get some knockout. damage down. No last breath, didn't decide to pop his ultimate, and Impact gonna turn to Chase. Dandy coming as well, Faker. Joining the fight, a little knockup onto Imp, but no last breath. Plenty of breaths to come for Shivana. Well, Fire yeah, breaths. I mean, Dade, Dade uh, looked at that, and because of the itemization, the lack of armor went in. Mata and Bengi having a little bit of a ward war right here, but Bengi forced to back off, pink ward battle 
goes in favor of Ozone. That's right. Well, Requiem that. nearly back up again. So, you know, Dante all inning, though, controls the pace at which Requiem is used in this game. So as long as they trade one for one, Faker can't just surprise show up and uh, use Requiem when somebody gets low or coordinate a gank with Bengi in another lane, which could be quite dangerous. So that is true, yeah. I think, I think Dante's decision and the last Requiem just to go all in and make that trade is the right one. Uh, Looper. And then a couple again in the top lane, just not strong enough to take that Shivana on head to head. And you know, he's down on CS. He's done an admirable job keeping up as best he can, but they need him to get some items. They're gonna need him in team fights later. Yeah, and right here we do see him go back, finish his Trinity Force. So he's got a big power spike right now, particularly compared to Zimmer, but that turret's gonna go down. Yeah, will indeed. Madu coming in with the ball rise on the imp. Imp. Still gonna farm, but can't save that turret. So SK Telecom T1 takes turret number one in this game in 10 seconds now about until Dragon is back up again. Well, a lot of people recall. Before it's... the match is still, we were talking. SK yep. Telecom really likes to push all lanes as aggressively as possible. We see Impact constantly harassing, keeping Looper bottled up under his turret. And that chips away damage over time. We've seen the same thing in this bottom lane a lot of the time. Mondo and Piglin and Dade. Oh, Dade going through everybody. There's Bengi with the ultimate. Dade in a lot of trouble, has to pop that flash. I don't think he's gonna get out of this one. Oh, comes in with the ultimate, but not enough damage. Exhausted, meanwhile, allows Samsung Ozone to take that dragon. They're setting up a pick as well. They're trying, oh, the cocoon misses though for Dandy again. Gold they're gonna trade a turret for it. this, and there's the Shivana pushing power coming yep. into play in this matchup right here. Oh, really that's... difficult to deal with. Oh, Solar Flare barely catches Monty's end of play, misses a looper, comes in with that slingshot, doesn't get anything out of it. And Ozone stalling out a little bit here in the early mid game. They're gonna be down two turrets to zero very soon. Yeah, SK Telecom holding a slight lead and will yep. increase to about 2K, oh, but here's, here's the him. duel. Requiem coming in to help swing that duel in Piglet's favor. Piglet with the barrier and Imp just barely can't do it. That would have been a duel that Imp would win, I think, without that Requiem, but that's why League of Legends is a team game. Faker helping out with that one. Great call from Piglet as well to go ahead and be vocal about his need for Requiem oh, right yeah. there. Both players had that up. Uh -oh. Dane. Dane coming in. He wants himself a Piglet. There is an E. Easy kill. That's right. Man, Yasuo can be. Blade making yep. it easy. Dade picking up some steam right here. 2-2-1 two, two, and one already with the shim and moving into uh, an infinity edge more than likely. Yep, that's right. That's generally what people have been building on Yasuo lately. And Rod of Ages, there's an item I haven't seen in a while, Doa. Faker. No kidding. Just yeah. stacking up some HP and looking to head into the oh, late game. And da -da -da -da. A little bit of damage, just clearing that wave. Mondu is pretty tanky. But this is the second game in a row that uh, Ozone has failed to respect the globals. Last time they didn't respect the teleport, this time they that uh, we saw Imp go all in without respecting the Requiem. Yeah, yeah very true. You really have to be aware of those cooldowns. Uh, Faker just went back, completed his rod, now with Tear and Seeker's arm guard as well, so he's having no trouble farming oh, right there. Mondu. They, get Mondu. they do catch him. He's very, very low. Nice pulverize, though, knocks everybody up. And Piglet got back in lane just in time. That would have been an easy dive for a kill if that hadn't happened. Oh, dodges a true shot barrage, too. Impact's becoming a problem, however. Yep. You know, Dade, they're making a decision right now to send Dade into this bottom lane and keep Piglet safe and farming in mid. You know, he's got that short lane, easily able to escape back to the turret. And, uh, but they could send Dade up into the Shivana lane right now, honestly, Doa, because we don't see Shivana with any armor so far. Yeah, I agree. So they're, we'll have to see if this pays off for them to go ahead. They did get the tower, so it looks good right now, but Shivana Whoa, able to fire out. Baker gets caught flare. by the edge of the solar flare. Pretty Zenith surprising. Blade not finding a target. Yeah, I mean, that was a bit of a reach by Mata there with that solar flare. Didn't have a lot of support coming, and the range was just about out of where it needs to be. And a little bit of a battle over wards in that top lane. Looper manages to get out. Yeah, you see the lens swap coming in here as well. Uh, basically, there was only one lens at the beginning of this game, and that was Mata's, and now five already on the board. Yep. So the vision control, the ward war is really coming into effect at this stage. Is pretty much everybody is up there able to get that tier two sweeping lens with this 60 second cooldown. 
Mandu tried to make a play against Imp there, but Imp was a little bit too slippery. And we've still got a very, very even game. Yeah, the issue is, if we, if we take a look right now, Dandy is itemizing for Spirit Visage after uh, Ancient Golem. And the reason why he's doing that is Piglet, again, we talked about this last game, Sivir doesn't scale well into the late game. So the major threat is going to be Karthus' AP damage. So yeah. go ahead, get some resistance to that Requiem, get some resistance to that team fight AoE early on in this game, and you'll be in a much better situation. Impact may want to consider going for a Blade of the Ruined King right now, just to add a little bit more balance and physical damage in. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Any little edge you can manage to get. That we'll see. Wow. Looper's falling pretty far behind in CS right now. Yeah, to be expected though, he is yeah. a kill down as well. And look at this, with Modest coming up to help Looper out. Yep. Pigs go down though, deep wards from SK Telecom, able to suss that one out. Danny oh, coming Dandy. around, not gonna go in. Yeah, they too knew Mingy many, was nearby somewhere. Yeah, too many unknown unknowns right there. And Requiem still up as well. That's right. Dade has been a little bit quiet lately. Dragging up in about a minute now. No, he just needs to hit that late game. He has, Yasuo gets a just insane power spike once he gets both Shiv and, uh, and Infinity Edge. You know, that crazy shoulder thing that Yasuo has, you'd think most of his moves would be him just like shoulder ramming people, <laughs> you know? I wouldn't want to get hit with that. One minute till drag now. Samsung Ozone setting up around the pit. A lot of pink wards already going down. SK Telecom walking into it blindly. If Ozone can get the Requiem out early, that would be ideal for them because if they can get it out and then go heal and then re-engage at the Dragon, but they're pushing out the lanes right now, getting that total control. Now they're trying. 30 seconds now until Dragon, and that's gonna be a big point of contention between both of these teams. SK Telecom coming in. They're gonna find that ward with the sweeping lens. Yeah, three pinks up there though. So they are gonna be able to clear out easily and keep everybody in the dark. Looper deciding not to go ahead and use that elastic slingshot oh, to go in. Oh man, the way that they were grouping, that was just like a giant ultimate sign for Mata. Well, Imp is kind of cut off from the rest of his team right now. Dragon is live and that'll be activated immediately. Dandy, super tanky though. Oh, yeah. Zeta oh, Flame misses. Flame. That's right, Looper gets uh, headbutt that right away. There's a nice load from Benki. Solar Flare doesn't really connect. Dane forces out of the fight right away as Impact gets into the back lines. Impact doing such a good job of zoning this fight. Piglet backs away, flashes into that dragon pit, gets hit a little bit. Dane goes in for the kill. Can he finish off Piglet? Piglet with the barrier. It's a fight dragon pit, and Piglet comes out on top. Here comes Requiem. Goodbye, Looper. There's the passive pop. Mata manages to live, but everybody else on Samsung Ozone is going to go down, and it's going to be another dragon for SK Telecom K. Samsung Ozone was very disjointed in terms of their engage in that yeah, fight. Really Looper's were. ultimate really didn't do a whole lot right there. Uh, just They were cut off, and that's because SK Telecom inserted themselves between the mid tower that they were trying to defend. So SK Telecom put enough pressure in mid that Imp was on the side couldn't get into that team fight very well, and nobody could really take advantage of the CC in order to deal damage from the carries. Yeah, and I gotta say this, Yasuo from Dade just has not been working out quite yet. He's got his Infinity Edge now. He's gonna be doing a lot of damage, but it just seems like he hasn't been able to find enough Let's take opportunities. Let's look at that again. So let's, right here, Mata misses the engage with the Zenith Blade. Looper comes into the back lines, but he gets headbutted out and then uses his ult. So he flashes on yeah. top, keeps Faker and Piglet back, but Imp gets the exhaust onto him early. Mondu does a great job of CCing Imp. And Dade just zoned out of the fight by Impact and Faker right there, not really able to contribute much of anything. Only gets his ult down onto Piglet. And then Piglet with the barrier bait. Dragon helps Piglet finish him off. And Piglet dies to Dragon. So Dade will pick up another kill for that one. Well, that's nice. He'll take what he can get at this point. Whoa, Zenith Blade comes in. Right on Mandu, there's the Solar Flare as well, but they don't have any follow-up. Mandu's going crazy with his Leona play, and now there's a counter engage. Banky coming in, popping that ultimate for the slow, and Looper 
doesn't hit anyone with that slingshot. Dandy needs to back off. He's in trouble here. A lot of damage coming in from Piglet. And there's a headbutt pulverized. Dandy knocked against the wall. Baker comes in to try to claim that kill. There's Rappel. But where can Dandy go? The answer is nowhere. Impact gets that one. A re-engage now for Mata. But he's already so low. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Baker comes in. There's a kill for Looper, though. Dade doing a decent amount of damage. But it's too little too late. Banky gets the kill on the him. Dade, Dade. wants the revenge. Oh, but he went way too far. And that's going to be another headbutt pulverized. So much damage coming in from Impact. A double kill for him. Can he get the triple? Yes, he can. Triple kill for Impact. And Impact going for that blade right after those items, realizing yeah. that he needs that extra damage. And it really pays off right there. And Ace for SK Telecom. Dade really making a questionable decision to turn back into that team fight. Instead yeah. of protecting the turret, virtually no way he was going to be able to kill the ultra tanky impact in that situation. Yeah, I think Dada is just trying too hard to make this Yasuo work, and Samsung Ozone in big trouble now. I mean, they kept things close, but things are starting to fall apart a little bit. Yep. SK Telecom trying to go for that blue buff, but decided to back off here after. The scariest thing is Faker didn't even have to use Requiem in that fight either yeah, for really. a pretty complete SK Telecom victory. But we talked about that synergy between Sivir and Faker, Faker's uh, Karthus that is coming into this game. And you could see it right there on the hunt, just rocketed Karthus yeah. straight into the enemy team. And the, uh, the AOE damage from Defile and Lay Waste, absolutely massive. You can see Faker already has his Seraph's Embrace right there as well, making him even tankier, more difficult to kill. Well, if you'll take a, a trip through history with my Monte Cristo. Well, we're going to have to wait, though. Mata getting caught here, goes for the seventh play. On the impact, backs off, but he is just plain caught. But remember back when we said the Flash nerfs way back when were a nerf against Karth as well. All these speed boost team cops may do a good job of getting Karthus back into the fight, where before Flash could only take him. It's going to be a Baron very early for SK Telecom. They're going to try to steal it, though. They're backing off. Looper trying to do something. Mangy manages to claim Baron. And now the engage on the Samsung goes on exhaust immediately onto Dade. There's a wind wall. Doesn't help a lot. Headbutt Volvrise comes in. And they are just going to clean it up. Baker getting a little bit low. Looper in the back lines. Baker lives, though. And it's cleanup time. Mandu went down, but that's about it. Impact with more kills. Oh man, Karthus with the double, and things have just completely gone off, gone off the tracks. Dada didn't Ozone. even get to use his ultimate. I don't no, think in that didn't. last fight at all. I so, don't see it. I mean, they just haven't been able to make this this synergy work, and a lot yeah. of it, honestly, is because of Mandu's exceptional Alistair play. Because whenever Looper goes in, Dada gets punted out, so it's hard for him to actually get into the mix and get the maximum number of people with last breath. I mean, there's just, there's not much he can do. Yep. SK Telecom starting to look like they're gonna have a pretty dominant win here in game two as well, despite that close start from Ozone. Very close game for a while. Yeah. And the SKT coaching staff there on your screen for a moment looked pretty pleased about things. A win here would put them one win away from taking the Champions Winter Grand Finals. It's getting close. Let's take a look at that again. There was some weird interaction here with Mondu and Looper. I'm not sure what happened right there on the edge of the Dragon, uh, Baron Wall rather, but there's the re-engage happening right away. Looper going to go in, immediate exhaust down on Adate. They're just trying to escape right now. There we go, knocking him up. And oh, see, what happened was that we saw the Alistair pulverize happen at the same time that everybody got knocked up from the ultimate from Zack. Yeah. So they were safe to punt Dade back in for the kill afterwards because he couldn't follow up on the Zack ultimate and use his ult in any meaningful way. Well, Dade really doesn't have any good targets anymore at this point. I mean, everybody on that team can either disengage easily or can just go to go toe to toe with Yasuo at this point. You got to say though, Joe, Mandu is having an outstanding series so far. He I really mean, is. Picked man. up that, picked up that MVP in the first game, and you could make a very strong case for him being the MVP in this game. As yeah, well. I would agree completely. I think a big part of what you said earlier with that team fight, the way he gets Dade out of the fight every single time immediately has been huge. Dade has been a non-factor largely because of Mandu's great play. Well, it's just so funny because coming into tonight, Doha, this is really a curveball that SK Telecom has thrown. We haven't seen Mandu preferring these melee supports. Yeah. He hasn't been playing them. 
SK Telecom made a pattern throughout the playoffs of playing long-range bully duo lanes. Now they come here and they play, you know, Sivir Leona, Sivir Alistair. These are all-in, hard-engage 5v5, you know, duo lanes. And I don't think I don't think Samsung Ozone was expecting this. I certainly wasn't. Yeah, it doesn't look that way. There goes another turret. Ooh. Actually, if got very low, there's a solar flare. They're gonna try to counter engage Banky with another good zone. Impact way into the back lines, and Looper on his own in the middle of the team. Shivana picks up that first kill, and Dade again just cannot get there. And it is all SK Telecom. Dade, nearly the last man standing, gets a nice ultimate, but still just not enough. Banky barely lives through that. Another double kill for Impact. He is doing so much. Another triple kill for Impact. And are they gonna try to get the quadra? No, Looper gets back to the fountain just in time, and they're gonna be okay with this inhibitor with maybe two inhibitors. Yeah, no, two inhibitors down. No Requiem use again, no. Oh, they're going for the win, there and it they, is. They, they've got That's Requiem it. still. They've got time, yeah. There's nothing they can do to stop wow. this. Wow, and SK Telecom T1K with another strong win here in game number two. They are one game away from the Champions Winter Grand Final Championship. Well, not only that, they're one win away from completing a clean sweep That's of this right. tournament, something that I... I didn't think we would I, ever I didn't see. think it was possible. I didn't think it was possible either, but SK Telecom, a team that we know can make the impossible possible. Kind of like Willy Wonka, the Wizard of Oz. Impact was such a god that game. I mean, his zoning out of uh, him, you'll notice in that last team fight, he did a perfect dive, got his Blade of the Ruin King active yeah. off onto him, and then flashed on top of him. Imp had no chance to live against a Blade Shivana. And this is what makes SK Telecom K so terrifying, is because even at the Grand Finals, they are looking better than they have ever looked before. Every match.